All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we are bringing you the Seasonal Sorcery Sorcerer. This one is from Kalia's Chronicle of Runes, which is an awesome Kickstarter we'll get into more about later. If you're new to the channel or the series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're going to write the roleplay, combat, and synergy based on how the abilities gained improve on the base class abilities. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Sourcebook Bundle giveaway. This free stuff is great. All that being said, let's get right to it. I was impressed you got that on the first try. I know, right? Because there was a lot of alliteration in there with seasonal <laughs> sorcerer and, and, yep, and the yep. double C's with Callius Chronicles. I, you know, a lot you of, gotta appreciate it. Yeah, you do. I, so, good kudos to you. So, at first, we're going to get seasonal synchronicity. All these third-party groups really love their difficult-to-read words and... After a long day of working full time, sometimes your brain doesn't want to function. I'm like, eh, that's that word. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, it's seasonal. It makes sense. You can be attuned to the autumn, winter, spring, or summer seasons. While attuned to that season, you are considered to know the spells in its associated spell list, which we will pop up on the screen. So, I have to read off all 20 of the spells. Each of these spells counts as a sorcerer spell for you, but doesn't count against the number of sorcerer spells you know. Wonderful. We know that sorcerer is sore spot. You can change which season you were attuned to whenever you finish a long rest. So good that you're not locked into it right. for long haul, like to level up or for eternity, just once a day. One of those is a unique spell to Kibbles with the Tornado spell, the big one for the autumn season, but the rest of them are normal spells you would see in the edition. Right. And one of the reasons we have a Kibbles spell in this book is because uh, the creator of this has worked and with editing and design for several other uh, big projects like Griffin Saddlebag, Loot Tavern, DM Dave, Kibble's Tasty, Mage Hand Press. So very involved in the homebrew community. Yep. So they're all just kind of helping each other out a little bit with this project. Which we approve. Once you reach second level in this class, you can use an action to regain spent sorcery points. The number of sorcery points you regain is equal to your proficiency bonus if the season you are attuned to matches the season in your current location. If you're on a plane with a strong connection to nature, such as the Feywild, or your environment exemplifies characteristics of your attuned season at the GM's discretion, for example, if you're in a lush forest attuned to spring, otherwise the number of sorcery points you regain is equal to half your proficiency bonus. Once you regain sorcery points in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Right. So it's a great way to just get back some of your primary resource. Right. And, of course, there's some you know, GM discretion in there as well, which gives you a little bit more... Uh, reliability for getting mm -hmm. it because it might feel a little bad if you're attuned to the wrong season at the wrong time. Also at level one we have one with nature. You learn the Druidcraft cantrip, which doesn't count against the number of sorcery cantrips you know. You also either gain proficiency in the nature skill or learn to speak, read, and write Sylvan. Your choice. So free language yep. or proficiency. Good, because if for and some proficiency. reason you have the other one already because of a background or a race choice, you have an alternative option Unless you happen to have both ahead of time, then I wouldn't let them pick a third. That's just me. <laughs> just watch some preference. It's not going to break up. It's not going to break anything. Nope. It's all, it's just RP and flavor at that point. At sixth level, we start getting some more options for your seasonal attunement. And the first choice that you get, if you are attuned to autumn, you can ignore the effects of strong wind and wind based magic, such as the gust of wind spell. In addition, you can spend one sorcery point as a bonus action to magically create a surge of wind that sweeps you through the air in a direction of your choice. This wind moves you up to 30 feet without provoking opportunity attacks. So some nice movement yep. and uh, additional ways to spend sorcery points. Never bad that. You also have winter as another option, of course. You have resistance to cold damage. Makes sense. In addition, whenever you see a creature within 30 feet of you move at least 10 feet along a solid surface, you can spend one sorcery point as a reaction to momentarily coat the surface beneath that creature in slick ice. Target must exceed a dex save against your spell save DC or fall prone. So, another utility option that yep. you get with this. Next up for spring, your movement isn't slowed by difficult terrain or plant-based obstructions, such as the plant grow spell. You advantage on saving throws against magical plants that would move you or impede your movement, such as the entangle spell. In addition, you can spend one sorcery point as a bonus action to conjure a mass of vines that lash out at a creature you can see within 30 feet of you. Target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC, or its speed is reduced to zero until the start of your next turn. So Very nice, nice uh, anti-control and it's control for yourself. Yes. And finally, we have summer. You gain resistance to fire damage. Shocker there. 
In addition, immediately after a hostile creature touches you or hits you with a melee attack, you can spend one sorcery point as a reaction to momentarily wreath yourself in flames, which are harmless to you. Very important. Important, <laughs> important distinction. Uh, when you do, the creature takes fire damage equal to your charisma modifier, and the flames appear to consume your form as you teleport to an unoccupied space within 15 feet of you. Yeah, so, so a nice little get out of jail free card potentially you get out of somebody's melee range mm-hmm. if they have multi attack you know if they used all their movement to get to you you can blip, blink out mm-hmm. of there only get hit once instead of two or three or seven times right <laughs> level 14 we get season's zenith you get two options here based on you know solstice equinox so the first is the blessing of the equinox which is the autumn spring Whenever you finish a short or long rest, you can either grant a number of temp HP equal to twice your sorcerer level plus your charisma modifier, if you're attuned to autumn, or restore a total number of hit points equal to the same amount if you're attuned to spring. These hit points are divided as you choose among any number of creatures you can see within 30 feet of you. Alternatively, when you finish a long rest, while you're attuned to spring, you can increase the hit point maximum of one creature you touch by an amount equal to your sorcerer level. This increase lasts until the end of your next long rest. So some interesting healing uh, slash barrier kind of mechanics in there to help with the party staying alive. The other half, of course, is Blessing of the Solstice, which is either winter or summer. Whenever a creature you can see within 30 feet of you takes cold or fire damage, you can use your reaction to consume some of that energy, reducing the damage the target takes by amount equal to half your sorcerer level. In addition, on each of your turns, when you make an attack or cast a spell that deals cold damage if you are attuned to winter, or fire damage if you're attuned to summer, you could add your proficiency bonus to one damage roll of that attack or spell. There you go. So nice, nice uh, party support there with some defensive and yes. uh, give yourself some extra damage. Very interesting uh, ability there that has mm-hmm. the multiple different uses. Like, I mean, the whole subclass has all these different yep. options. It's very, very versatile for a sorcerer. Yes, definitely. Before we get on to the capstone, which you don't want to miss because you want to see this one, uh, we're going to give you a little bit more information about the Kickstarter, which is Kalia's Chronicle of Runes. So the main feature of this Kickstarter is runes. So what are runes? They're dynamic and flavorful new category of magic item designed to customize and empower your character's epic gear. So basically, make magic items with the runes. There's actually a 16-page sample PDF that you can check out on the Kickstarter as well, which we'll have a link to below, so make sure you check that out. And they're flavored for different things. You might have like celestial runes or dwarvish runes or (laughs) elvish runes. Giant runes, those are giant runes as well. Some really cool options with those. And of course, working with us, we always like to see races, sub-races, sub-classes, classes. Yes. So they also have a bunch of those in the book as well, which is over 300 pages. So a lot of a lot. awesome stuff, spells, monsters, you know, all that good stuff featuring some items and uh, other things in this book from Loot Tavern, uh, Critical Crafting, Dungeon Strugglers, Griffin Saddlebag, Fluffy Folio, Dungeon Scribe, and a couple others among yep. those. And of course, some physical merch as well, because... What's your Kickstarter without some kind of physical sense? That's right. Absolutely. So some really cool options. Definitely worth taking a look at. Check out that link down below. Don't want to miss out on this one. Lots of awesome stuff and high quality art. I mean, check out the, the sample PDF is the, fantastic. Yeah, the artwork is S tier. So check that out. Link down below. Let's keep going. On to our capstone ability, which is the avatar of the four seasons. When you reach 18th level, you learn the spells in every season's associated spell list. So that's a total of 20 free spells you know as a sorcerer. I'll take it. Which if you know off the top of your head how many spells sorcerers learn, it's... Basically not. It's 15. So you more than Basically double... Basically not. You would more than double the amount of spells you can have known, which is wonderful because it's by far the biggest weakness for base class sorcerer. So... You must still designate one season which you are tuned to for the purposes of your other features. Makes sense. In addition, you can use a bonus action to magically transform into a dazzling fusion of all four seasons. For one minute, you gain every season's benefits from the ecological embodiment feature. And you can use the abilities granted by that feature without spending any sorcery points. Once you transform in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest unless you spend five sorcery points to transform again. Quick hit, I love the fact that they give you the option to spend sorcery points to do it again. Because some of those crazy capstones seem like, well, it's so be overpowered, you do it again. It's like, well, it takes 
a quarter, more than a quarter of your sorcery points for the day to do yeah. that again if you really wanted to. Now, granted, you can get some back with your other features, so yep, all more reason why you should use this at least twice a day. <laughs> yep, no reason. <laughs> it is too good not to. But those are all the abilities gained in they the are. subclass. And with that, we move over to the rating portion of the video. Yes, first and up No, is... I'm not going to try to do this. <laughs> I was going to say. First up is the roleplay <laughs> asterisk, as always. Talking about roleplay, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass and how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. So, all that out of the way, I think there is some some clear um, RP for sure in oh, this yeah. subclass. Yeah. The only kind of hindrance that we're going to see with it is based on what season you're attuned to at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe even with that limitation, all of the options are going to have some form yep. of uh, RP value. Some just have more than others. Some just have more than others. This yep. is correct. So, for example, uh, like the winter spells, you do have um, like Sleet Storm, Ice Storm, Corn of Cold. Those are RP. But Blindness, Deafness, and Sanctuary, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, same kind of thing with uh, the summer spells. They're more... You know, combat focus, but you do have like daylight, heat metal could fall into RP potentially. Sure. But and then on the other side with autumn and spring, probably have more of the RP side of things. Yeah. So Feather like, fall, gust of wind, wind wall. Yep. Yeah. All, and then all useful RP. Plant growth, yep. giant insect, tree stride. So spring is almost entirely RP useful spells. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that is some nice options on there, and you aren't locked into any one of them nope. at once. Yeah, because if for some reason you just know. You're unlikely to see any significant combat. It's going to be a traveling day. You're going to be doing a lot of RP in a city. You're, you're not going to really want to have super offensive, extra offensive stuff. You're going to have sure. offensive stuff in your sorcerer kit anyway. Right. So you exactly, know, you can lean into grabbing the spring stuff with entangle and plant growth and things. Yeah, and also of course you'll get a free cantrip with RP Druidcraft. Mm -hmm. You also get either you know the proficiency in nature or learn Sylvan, which yep. just more RP on there, which mm -hmm. is great. And then the ecological embodiments, um, those are a little bit more niche, but you do get some options with, uh, you know, terrain-based yeah. stuff yep. or uh, damage types like cold and fire if you're in, like, certain planes where there's maybe elemental traps or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, extreme conditions that could maybe help. I mean, to me, again, I always think of that in-between RP thing, like a chase it's kind of thing. If, if you're after somebody or somebody's after you, if you're tuned to winter, you can make something somebody fall, mm -hmm. you can let you catch up with them, or you can outrun yep. them. That's great. Totally useful RP situation. Yeah, so definitely definitely some RP uses in those as well, though they might fall a little bit more niche, and you'd have to maybe be lucky to be in the right season at the right time to get the ability that you right. want in the moment. But if you can, that's so that that is a, the, the small hindrance. But again, because there is a ton right. of versatile options in here, and again, you get to address the number one thing you get free spells for your sorcerer, and a lot of them do have RP potential that totally helps you not have to worry right. about picking as many RP spells with your limited number you're getting from your base class, right? And then you're with your zenith stuff, you're getting more party utility that's going to give mm -hmm. some maybe indirect RP because you're. You know, giving a buffer for healers to maybe not use as many spell slots to heal uh, with your either reducing of damage or temp HP slash healing. Yep. So either of those options, both are kind of indirect RP. It lets you and your whole party actually conserve more resources for role play in particular. Absolutely. And then capstone is pretty much combat. Yeah. But if you really are in the moment and you really need to access one of the other seasons that you're not attuned to, Yep. You could just pop it just so you have access to all those things for, yep. you know, maybe you only need it for a minute. And then if you... Do you really need that feather fall to, like, jump off a cliff to get away from somebody? You sure. do it. So, <laughs> there's some, some stuff that can be done there, though it is a little bit limited and a little costly if you end up using it more than once or twice a day. Yes. So that is something to keep in mind. All that being said, some great RP options. We went with a 4 out of 5. So very solid. The only reason it didn't score higher is because of some of the situational... Uh, aspects to it yep, and maybe things lining up with where you're at or not at at the time when certain circumstances pop up. This is true. But all very solid. If it if you can fall on you know the thing that you need at the right time it's very potent I think. Yes. Absolutely. On to the combat side of things where again the overwhelming amounts of options and versatility that's there and the fact that you can change daily like if you know that you're going to be going somewhere where you really need that fire resistance you really need that cold resistance because you're going to be tackling a dragon of that type or going to elemental plane or you're going to be in the desert and you know temperature and things matter to your campaign 
mm-hmm. you can plan for that ahead of time, and that can be great to just help you not take that extra damage you're going to see. You're going to get access to some extra combat spells too that aren't, you know, blaster caster type spells, but are effective in combat. Where Ice Storm does damage, it also is good for creating some difficult terrain around the air. Same thing where like Wind Wall helping wall somebody off and getting around you. Some defensive things like. Death Ward, Fire Shield, things like that. Some, you know, CC type things within in, in Tangle and Plant Growth. A lot of options, Blightness, Deafness, besides just some extra Blaster Caster stuff like Cone of right. Cold and uh, and things like that. And Flame Strike, obviously. So you've got, you're getting a nice mix of options for combat spells that won't have to count towards your spells known so you know they're going to be there, mm-hmm. which is great. But you get some other, you know, spells that you want because you're not going to get to pick very many from your base class as we talked about earlier. So that's always great Um, because, again, anything that lets you address your biggest weaknesses as a base class is always a nice plus. Yes, for sure. With your, you know, the rest of your ecological embodiments, besides the resistances, obviously, being able to CC somebody by knocking them prone, getting an extra, you know, gust of wind spell to move something, somebody if you needed to, that's usually only more RP, but still technically the fact that it's only one sorcery point is helpful if you needed to do it in combat, it's not going to cost you that much to be able to cast that. I really, really, really like the summer reaction option to get you out of trouble because mm-hmm. you're one of the two squishiest classes in 5th edition, along with Wizard obviously, so the fact that something has multi-attack, which you get past like CR, I don't know, 6, 7, almost every Everything has yeah. multi-attack at that point. So uh, being able to only get hit once and then just like, screw you, take a little fire damage and I'm out. Right. <laughs> if, if you happen to be at the end of their movement. So I really do like effectiveness and flavor to that. Uh, of course, with the Season Zenith, interesting that they're giving sorcerers some support type things in here. Not just for themselves with the other defensives like right. the Blink. Uh, but with Party with giving out some temp HP or some healing depending on the season. That's really cool, and also being able to reduce damage for the you know for blessing of solstice, uh, for fire or cold damage, and you can turn and give yourself some extra damage. So there's there's a nice ebb and flow to that, which I really like. Um, you could easily have done gone more potent to either one of those and still been effective, but I kind of like it's this light dip in both directions, both mm-hmm. as a defensive for somebody or and and an offensive dip. Right. I do really like that. Of course, your capstone. It's always fun to go crazy buck wild billy goat for a little bit and have access to 20 extra spells you're literally getting more than double your baseline spell total number <laughs> by getting to learn all those spells all at once because you way more options it's all the options in the world so you get to feel like what a wizard sorcerer subclass <laughs> dip is a little sure. bit <laughs> not knowing all these spells and still having your sorcery points um again the the major limitation with the combat is the same thing as with the rp is being in the same season and having the right spells attuned to the right thing ahead of time if you couldn't yeah. plan because like getting your sorcery points back for with your seasonal synchronicity it's only half as effective if you're not in the right season that matches your thing or your environment mm-hmm. or whatever so that's something to keep in mind so the, your the, your peak potency will be kind of not controlled by you to a certain extent you like you're you're sure. going to know what season it is obviously so you yeah. want to stay attuned to that but that may not give you the exact spells you need for the given mm-hmm. situation. So there's some give and take there, obviously. But still, with the choices, the versatility, the fact that you can change every day, nice party buffs and everything else, and CC and a good mix, we gave it a 4 out of 5 for uh, yes. possible 5 in combat again as well. Yeah, very solid. And then lastly, the synergy uh, with this one, kind of already touching on the things we've already mentioned. Some of the biggest weaknesses to Sorcerer are spells known, just because you don't yeah. have a lot of options. Right. And that's one of the reasons why uh, sorcery points are so important is because if you give them lots of options, they can become very uh, troublesome. <laughs> when they can start using sorcery points with a lot of spells, mm-hmm. you can if you're clever with what choices and metamagics yep. you have and things like that with the spells that you have available to you, you can really get some shenanigans going. Yep. Um, and then, of course, actually getting extra spells, potentially, because if you're getting sorcery points back, you can convert to and from spell slots to sorcery points back yep. and forth. So that could help kind of get you an extra spell slot if you needed to. You're like, I really wanted to cast at this level, but I'm a couple of sorcery points, so I have conversion. Yep. Well, you use that, get a couple more sorcery points, now you can convert and cast a higher level spell again. Yep. Um, so there's some options with that. And then uh, getting lots of different ways to spend sorcery points, yep. also great, because sometimes metamagics, 
you know, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Yep. This gives you more options, utility that you can do with those. And most of the the cost in here are not high. There's a Very lot of low cost, you know, yes. one point, one point, one point outside, one of, the point, outside yeah. of the cap stone. Which again, I expect that. For free too. I expect that one to be more than one point. Who cares yeah. that again? <laughs> yeah, it sh- as well it should be. And I think too, the biggest thing with this one is lots of internal synergy. Yes. Depending on you know what season you pick, you get different spells that align with different. Uh, embodiments which align with you know your uh, zenith so you get different options and you have to look at everything that you get from each season because right. it, it's kind of like with um some other subclasses we did with like the hag uh warlock yep where it's like you choose green one, hag, and you have to hag look at all the abilities hag, you get yeah. with each one and you're like okay so you got to keep in mind the options available. So maybe you're like, I really like these two, but I don't really care about the spell list. It's like, well, you got to weigh the pros and cons of that. It's mm-hmm. like, do I want the better spell list for a combat, but like maybe not as good RP options or vice versa? Yep. Though it is pretty well balanced across the board with yeah. with combat and RP for yep. each option. You're not going to feel bad no. picking any one of them. No, not necessarily. No. So all that being said, we went with a four and a half out of five yep. in the synergy. Great options. Um the only thing I think that's keeping it from a five is maybe uh, potency of some of the things are a little bit on the low end. Uh, like, I mean, you're spending one sorcery point or it could get expensive. Uh, for example, with the uh, cold or with the cold resistance with winter embodiment, yep. uh, you spend the sorcery point for the freezing of ground with the slick ice. If you're using that as a reaction, that's first of all, it's taking your reaction. So if you have something like Warcaster, you're not able to cast a spell then. True. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Same thing with and, the, the summer one with the reaction. Right. Blink. So all yeah. the reaction ones, you're, you're taking away an opportunity if you were to go Warcaster yeah. for that option to cast a, a spell. So that's one thing to keep in mind with there. And also, if you're using it every turn, you're going to burn the sorcery points pretty quick, even if it yeah. is only one. You, so You definitely have to keep in mind you're, you're playing a sorcerer, not a monk, who gets their key points back on a short rest. Right. Or bar getting their back on you know, short rest as well, eventually. It's great having the utility options, yep. but if you're just throwing them willy-nilly, you could find yourself running low on resources pretty yep. quick. It's, it's you know, pl- playing a full caster normally. You feel like you've got all the spell slots in the world, but if you just try to blow everything you've got on the first two things you see, now you're done. Yeah, you out. Yeah. So you've got to be smart with your resources. I definitely think this is a class that has a high floor in terms of what it gives you because there's a lot of options. Mm-hmm. But it also has a high ceiling based on being able to master the balance of spending here, a tune for this, to carry this with this. And if you if played really well, this is a very, very versatile sorcerer, which is a weird thing to say. Yeah, for sure. Sorcerers just, usually just blow stuff up. Right. And then just as a, a flavor thing that just, I think, like, flavorful, this is incredibly flavorful, fits really well thematically with the, you know, topic of the subclass being mm-hmm. seasons. Yep. It's really cool for me as just no ratings involved in that. It's just, yeah. I just wanted to point out that I like this as as yep. I am. And also, I had the thought, I was like, if I did this, I would definitely pick an Eladrin. Because you pick, like, the seasonal Eladrin with the yeah. seasonal sorcerer. It's like, oh, so yeah. double dip with that. See, I went the other direction. I was like... Get a uh, Genasi of choice. Oh yeah, if sure. You, if you sure. Really, if, you can go like that, because he'd be like, "I'm a fire Genasi, so I'm a normal summer person, but I could, I could be flexible." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. I can be flexible. <laughs> yeah. So some cool options there as well. So, uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Make sure you check out Calio's Chronicle of Runes. Link down below. Don't want to miss out on this one. Great content. Check it out before it ends. Don't miss out. That's all for today, guys. As always, thanks for watching.